Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Suha Shah and we are playing KSB 1.41. So today we are going to design a rover that can land on EVE because we have a contract on EVE. So I decided to make you part of the whole design decision uh, here. The first thing I have done here is created this um, rover here. I've for the first time actually started uh, to use a very good function here. Uh, I'm going to show you. I can't believe that I missed this, but if you press there move, I can press on the thing. I can even rotate it and drag it around like this. Okay, now it's not really behaving like I want to because it's on snap, but if I put it off snap, you know, snap off here, I can actually start placing things exactly how I want it. So that is exactly what I've done. Uh, so let's see here, go back, go back, go back, go back here, and um, I guess I'm gonna adjust the microphone a bit here, so yeah, okay, stupid microphone, it's never cooperate, <laughs> it's never doing, okay, so uh, I've tested this a bit, it's just a small part of the whole uh, idea I have here, I'm gonna do it unnecessarily complicated because it's more fun this way. I wanted to, do, to shoot things, everything, yeah. and I want this to be a safe landing, and I wanted to deliver this rover on EVE very safely. And as we can see here, uh, we have solar panels on this one, we have small, uh, small uh, science project here, and it's almost impossible to tilt over. I'm not sure, uh, I think it, the key to the non-tilting one is that I have tilted, uh, uh, or, or it's not tilting over, it's because I've tilted the wheels here, so the force is more pushing down, and uh, placed most of the heavy stuff here. Uh, I think I wanted to test here is to decouple this one, because this will be attached to uh, just the part we're gonna send to space here, so we don't want any accidents here, okay. First order of business, we don't need so much force because that can create problems, so for our rover, so we need to fix that. Yeah, let's go revert our uh, remote back to space play agar and we're gonna fix that because if we have too much force there it will just throw down because this is gonna hang in a contraption here and it will just push it down too violently here so uh force percent let's see here we don't need a lot uh, we just need a tiny amount we just wanted to, to it, the reason why i'm using uh and the coupler instead of a docking port is of the size difference because this one is a lot more tiny than uh, the coupler, so that is the reason I'm using this. Okay, so let's see here. Um, the first thing I want to do now is to convert this to my reroute it. So let's start. Select new root part. Okay, cool. So now we have a new root part. The reason for this is because otherwise I can't. Pick it, pick it down to the sub-assembly, okay, let's see here, there we have a sub-assembly, so let's drag it over here and drop it, and I'm gonna call it EVE or Rover, I already done one test here, but I think this one is a winner, so uh, let's start with that. So now we come to the very fun part of designing this, so, overwrite, boom, so, cool, we have done that. So let's go to Space Plane Hammer and then we're gonna show you the contraption and then we're gonna test uh, our delivery system. Okay, so here we have our EVE Rover Lander. I've attached one remote control, remote control device here. So it will, that's a guy, remote guidance control, I think is a complete thing here. So yes, we have put our rover inside this box here. So, and we have some decouplers here. The game is kind of weird in this way, it's always uh, always attached in just one point, so it's actually not attached here, but I wanted to be look at least right, but I don't think it will present any problems to deliver. And as you can see, it's fairly, fairly tiny here. If we have something to compare to, yeah, it's super tiny here. Uh, I, I, I actually consider just to spawn a Kerbal right beside the launch pad, so you kind of have some scale on big things here. So yes, this one will deliver our rover to the planet and land on this flat surface, and then we we'll release it from here, and then we we'll shoot off the top and uh, with some parachutes here. So we're gonna make this shoot off the top without it hitting the other one here. So let's just double the check. 
Uh, yes, as I suspected, I forgot to fix that. Okay, cool. So I'm, uh, our separators will fire for two and a half seconds and uh, with a very hard force of 4.8 to frost rate ratio in atmospheric. And it would be even, we must remember that on EVE we have an even thicker atmosphere. So I want it to be very high. So we want to clear this top here. So let's spawn this one on the launch pad. Okay, so here we are at the launch pad. We can see our rover is uh, safely inside our thing here. So if we release it here with the help of this, we have almost no force at all. It will just drop it down there safely. We can see the springs is fast in here. And now we come to the fun part. So I have tilted the separators a little bit bit here. I'm hoping that will clear the area from that because we don't want it to land here. After us, the, air, the, the parachutes will fire at the same time. But this is probably just the, let's see what happens. I believe it will just spin a bit, but hopefully it will spin a bit more. So that is how Okay, we don't need that much force, maybe. Uh, I will... Let's see, I don't really... Look, this landing, I think we actually have just spinned. We need to move it around more, otherwise we'll land right on top of the rover here, I believe. And that would be a disaster. <laughs> so let's go back. We have some uh, we have some rotation wheels inside this remote guidance uh, thing here, but I wanted this to work without me, uh, my interaction here. And I think if it's tilt, what I think I need to do is to have let's let's place them all manually. I think that is the key. So let's start over here. So if we have one of them going, <laughs> yes, this is. Uh, a stupid idea how to do things but i think it is a lot more fun uh, it's a fun delivery system at least uh, i have never seen something like this this is a stupid delivery system will i get a job will i put it on my job application to nasa no i don't think so will nasa hire me i don't believe so so yeah i'm a question talker now so let's, oh, let's see let's tilt this one here the thing is we want it to clear our um rover here we don't want this to get to snap into it so hopefully this would be more enough to throw it off do we need parachutes uh, to uh, uh, get it? No, I, I just find, find it uh, more interesting to have parachutes. We don't need it. We just need it to go away. But I think it's more an uh, elegance to have some parachutes and it will just uh, go down slowly there. And this is some rogue parachutes here. It's below. Okay, so let's see what happens if I just tilt one of them. Let's first release our rover here. It's safe. Let's see what happens. I think that was the key I needed to deliver it here. I'm not... I'm thinking I will go with this force here. I don't think we will be needing four parachute, but look at it. It looks super cool. So that means the uh, rover are safe. It, uh, it will land safely away from it. It will uh, crash down at 40 meters per second. I can't predict what will be happening on EVE, but I think this will be more than enough for that. So that was my super ID how to, uh, let's see here, Eve Lander Rover, is this you? So no, then we can just drive away. Okay. That was a little bit unpredictable. I didn't, didn't think that will be happening. I think I need to do another test. Just to see if this is a, will happen every time. Sometimes when we place stuff on the launch pad, it will spawn inside the ground and it will make explode. I, uh, I feel I have to t test this once more to be safe on this design here. Okay, cool, so let's do it. What, it's just jumped, okay, yeah, it's spawn now. All the physics in place here. Maybe, have I, maybe I haven't, uh, maybe I should put down the ejection force there, I'm not sure. Is this working? You can change uh, change things while you are uh, flying. So yeah. So let's 
yeah, this is a little bit boring for you to see, but yeah, see, see how nice it looks. And that is all about, you know, you know, as I say, always say, you never know if we will meet a different alien race here. This is the kind of things that we're uh, engineering that will impress them very much. And that is also important. Style is always, yeah, design over function. Okay. I think it was a one time occur occurrence. As usual, my wheels are screwed up. I'm actually going backwards when I should go. That is always a thing when you reuse things. But this is which should be easily fixable by not st steering the same. Okay, now I can steer a bit. Okay. We now know that it can't handle the forces, but it is quite okay for four free wheel. It works very well. And we just want to watch the documentary on the knowledge channel <laughs> that is on the cable uh, at home and there was some kind of Mars documentary and there you have the, these rovers here with uh, that one of the wheels actually stopped working so they had to drag the wheel around the surface of the moon and it was a ridiculous amount of time uh, when uh, when uh, how it, how long it took for them because they had to plan every move on the rover and it was kind of a delayed control because they have to program and it could take like 400 commands to just move around uh, four meters thankfully it's not that hard in ksb so let's go back to vehicle assembly okay so what we want to do do now we have uh, made a top so yeah this would probably be a very long video usually i uh, show you the finished result okay so this is good enough for me i just want to double check the fourth percent is just one so i already fought there uh we really, really did. so what we want to do now is actually start designing the whole part here so we want a fairly big parachute here so let's see here where that parachute ends up it ended up here uh, we want it to be before here so yes so we fire that one we release after we are landed we release our rover down to the platform and we shoot it away so cool so what we want to do now is uh, i want to add to add the thing is i think it would be a problem when we are traveling through the uh, traveling through the atmosphere at and uh, eve here is when it will go sideways kind of here so i want to have some more control over that so i'm thinking we should add an decoupler here instead of putting our uh, big heat shield here safely i will put some control wheels here just to make it even easier to navigate because this can ruin our mission if we start spinning I probably need to show you guys what can happen when you spin out of control to make you see what I'm talking about. So uh, let's see. Unfortunately, like it's three. We, we, uh, let's go for. Oh, we already have one. That's the reaction wheel. So uh, let's see here. What I'm looking for a component in control. I want one of these big ones. Oh, I already took one of those. Am I retarded? Probably. Yes, I'm, I'm looking for. That's kind of smallish. We don't need that much power, but yeah. Why not? I don't really care about the budget in this time. It's just to, I want to build it in this special way as I've built it. So let's go for the big one. And this one will slow us down. It will inflate it here. And that, that's the reason why I want the reaction wheels with the batteries. It's that if we, we can uh, have no control over this heat shield, and I don't think the reaction wheel inside the remote guidance unit here is powerful enough to spin this big thing here. But this one will slow us very much here. It's so cool. So let's get another decoupler. Uh, let's see. And then we just need something to try this a little bit more realistic with the whole landing and things. Because we need to find out what's going on here. We don't need a, such a big tank, we just want to go over the surface a bit so in the air so we can get a good, really good uh, test here. Okay, I don't need a main sail, it's way too powerful. This would be way, way too more more powerful when it's needed. Okay, so, so as you can see, it's a very small package. 
is the largest part of the package is our heat shield and I think it will make our entry into the EVE atmosphere so much easier to have that one big one. So what I'm thinking about, we will probably want to put everything into a ferry. That's, uh, let's just test this first. Okay, so here we have our uh, rocket here. It's not the most uh, <laughs> best rocket ever, but we just want to come, let's go four kilometers into the air so we get a feeling how it will work in real time. Yeah, it will not be a good test because we will be re-entering the surface like in arc inside the atmosphere, but yeah, we can get a feel. Let's see if there is any errors. We need to be able to adjust our parachute strength uh, from, uh, yeah, we want to see what happens when we land with this part here. So let's start here. Oh, yeah, we have so much power. I need to throttle down. Okay, so we're 1.8. Let's try to. So the only thing that is staring at us right now is the burst of our engines. So we are just using the vectors to control our speed here. Okay, there is an EVE robot chest over there, so yeah, <laughs> it's forgotten here. So let's just again get high up in the air to get test. Oh, we don't want to go to too much tilt over because we just have our vector to controlling us. So yes, we are starting to... Once more power is always good. I think we have, uh, yes, we have an amplitude of 4 kilometers, so let's throttle down. We're still traveling very fast here, so I want to go closer to our highest point, so the speed is not that big. So then we're gonna try this, all of this out, so let's see. We're about to hit it, so yeah, let's... This, yes, this will not, how it will be happening in real time here, so let's inflate here. And... And this was what I'm talking about. You see, if we didn't have any reaction wheel there, we would probably spin out of the control. So yeah, even this reaction wheel here is struggling to get us to where we need to go. <laughs> okay, but one way we can help ourselves, let's just stick this bit. Yeah, you see my problem there without the reaction wheel, we would be spinning out of control. So uh, let's... Oh. Okay, this was not how I planned everything. It looks like I broke some of my parts, but yeah, that could happen. Okay, let's speed this process off. So our, our landing speed is around 6 meters per second. It will probably be a lot slower, so that is a good news for us. The only bad news is that I seem to have lost some of the parts here in the test here, but it should probably not be a big problem for us. So let's just get down here and we will see how the landing goes here, even when we broke some. some. I now see that one of our separators has been separated from the other people. Yeah, that is not optimal, but yeah, it's a good one to test here. So let's slow down here. We are bound to hit here, but it is a safe speed. It's a very safe speed, so if I release... Okay, let's see what happens if I fire this one. Okay, so this is a big problem if we are having the separator uh, going rogue for us here. Yeah, it's always the problem when you are uh, testing things here, but I think we will revert this test and revert to launch. And let's do one more... Uh, similar to the experience we're gonna have when we go into the atmosphere for not counting in the whole yellow thick atmosphere but we can test it a little bit bit more because it was not supposed to separate with things while we was going up here so i think this will probably be a lot better so let's put out at seventy-five thousand meter uh, let's put us at eighty thousand meters here and apply. So now we are in space. Yeah, you probably guessed that one. So let's go retrograde. So we are orbiting around 80,000 meters per. So this will be a more uh, similar to what we are actually going to happen here. So let's just make sure that we are landing here. So that's really cool. 
So now we have done that. Let's separate this one. Uh, sticky our heat shield. Then fly it already now. And yes, let's just drive forward until we hit into the atmosphere. So, and this is one of the, I see now one of our pro big problems that will be a problem all. also if we land in EVE and we land in the sea. I have no solution for this. I actually spent about one to two hours trying to make this contraption to float on the surface on the liquid here or yeah the sea here at Kerbin because there are seas in EVE but I didn't come up to a solution to make this one float so you can land in the sea at least our side if we land we will be able to make our contract here this is going way too slow so let's spin this up one of the interesting things is that the heat shield is actually breaking our speed very fast here we are just traveling at 80 meters per second here uh, so the heat shield is actually acting as a parachute a bit, so it's breaking us as good as a parachute for, for the, this kind of build at least. So, but I don't like that we are landing over the sea. I would prefer not to, but let's see what's happening if we land in the sea. Let's, let's meet each other to, I will just stage me. Oh man, that was a stupid decision. I should probably... Oh, I'm punishing this, my, my design so much. Okay, cool. So let's see what happens if we land on the sea. Uh, we will probably not float. So let's go. We didn't lose any separatrons. Yeah, I, as I said before, I was working on a design that could do all these, uh, do all these things for us so it could float. But I think you get to hit the surface so slow so you can sink. Otherwise, you just go through water like this and then our mission is finished already so let's do i will do another test i will skip forward until we are at 8000 meter again i will try to land over land this time well, ladies and gentlemen we are going down here it looks a little bit rocky here we are 10,000 meters above yeah, it looks a little bit rocky here, but that is uh, actually a good thing because now I can see what would be happening if I land on a not very flat place. So, yes. So, I restrange all my things here because the problem before I had was that I staged this part before this one. So, let's start getting out our parachute here, break our speed a bit. We don't want to decouple our we don't want to decouple our heat shield until our speeds are more around 1000 meters because that will that will slow our speed so now we can decouple safety we, <laughs> so it's going down very fast because the action force is kind of high okay so we are going down here in fourth speed we, it's a little bit bumpy here but i think uh, our it will be no problem at all here so yes hopefully not Hopefully not. I shouldn't say too much because we don't know. So let's save, a, go normal speed here. It's a, not a very flat surface, but it landed very perfectly there. <clears throat> let's separate the top first. Yeah, and that was the problem. I uh, and it was good that we can test this because now it's kind of going into the wall here. So let's see. Hopefully nothing will explode when. It is. Okay, so we have a problem. Did I explode my whole... What exploded? Let's find out. Our rover is going down the hill here. Another note to myself, we need to break... Uh, <laughs> we have to have brakes on our rover. Okay, let's see. But the rover looks fine. It looks fine. I think it was something else that exploded. So let's apply the brakes here. So, one of the things we need to do... Oh, yeah. It's just a whoop. Let's see if we can. Gear action. Oh, that's the brake one. So, yeah, cool. So, one thing we need to do, we need to, when we are traveling with our 
uh, here, with our robo here is to have to break. Otherwise, this, these kind of things can lead to disaster because otherwise, maybe when I'm flying up here with our top here, uh, I can I can switch because we are in the air, and that one will just go into a, a pit of water or something other liquid things. So yeah. But the proof of concept, this is working. So let's start designing the other parts here. Uh, I think we need to build the big parts now. So let's go back to one thing I think I want to change, at least at this part here, is the force. Because yeah, it's way too powerful for uh, this. I think we will just, we don't need a lot of force. We just, just need it to release and nicely for us. We don't need a, a high ejection force on this one. So let's just put it at 10 so we can avoid any accident here. And we also want to go check, double check. I think I already checked that. Yes, they, they are at 1. And I must remember to play, use the brakes on my e over here so it will not just go down a hill like that. That would be a disaster. So now I have to do some boring things. I have to uh, I have to do all the math to what how much power I need be needing to go uh, all the way to EV error. So let's press here. Uh, we have some uh, some of this here. As usually, I want around 3,800 delta V to uh, escape Kerbin and put ourselves in an orbit around uh, 120,000, maybe 150,000. I don't believe I want to use. Uh, I don't want to use those atomic energy again because they are annoyingly uh, less. They are very fuel efficient, and we can be build a very small craft. But they are annoying to it. Those 50 minute, minutes burns are so boring. So yes, I will count on everything here. So uh, uh, I will be back soon. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I already forgot. I'm 2,790 delta V to go all the way here. But I, I kind of want to go around with 4,000 so we can get a good approach uh, if anything goes wrong too. So let's find out here uh, what's, how we will gonna build this. We want to have engines that are good in vacuum, of course, but yeah, let's just... I'm going with simple here, uh, so let's see here, We I also forgot, uh, we want to add a fairing here too, so let's go 